You all would agree with me when I say that we are more interested in studying the non-degenerate conics rather than the degenerate ones. Right. So from now on, whenever I say the word conic, I would by default be referring to the non-degenerate conics rather than the degenerate ones, even if I don't say it. Okay. Now tell me, there are four non-degenerate conics, circle, parabola, ellipse and hyperbola. You are already through with circles. So now it's the turn for parabola, right? You and I together will be diving deep into the world of parabolas and understanding it with utmost detail, utmost clarity and utmost precision. Let's start. To begin with, what is a parabola? Well, we just kind of revised uh, with the previous homework question that I had discussed with you that a parabola is a conic with eccentricity 1. Isn't it? To put it simply, I mean that a parabola is the path traced by a moving point such that at each position of its movement, the ratio of its distance from a fixed point focus and the distance from a fixed line directrix is equal to 1. Again, to make you understand it in a simpler fashion, let's say P is the moving point, S is my fixed point that is focus, and this line L that you can see over here is my directrix. So, parabola is nothing but the curve traced by the point P under the condition that its distance from the focus, that is PS, upon its perpendicular distance from the directrix, that is PM, is equal to 1. That's it. This in the next step gives you PS is equal to PM, which if you try to read, it says distance of P from the focus is equal to the perpendicular distance of P from the directrix. This, boys and girls, is not a trivial thing that you have obtained. In fact, this is the massive and most important fact about a parabola. What is it? Well, it says that if P is any random point sitting on the parabola, then its distance from the focus will be exactly same as its perpendicular distance from the directrix. Do you get it? Yes. Hence, this particular property, I want you to register in your minds very, very thoroughly because it is extremely useful and highly applicable. You will see that for yourself. Let's check out this question. In here, we have to find the equation of the parabola whose focus is having coordinates as 5,3 and the directrix is given to have equation 3x minus 4y plus 1 equals 0. Okay. Now, the property that I just talked about, that itself is going to come into play in here. Let's say P is a moving point such that at each position of its movement, its distance from this focus is equal to its perpendicular distance from this directrix. Then I am supposed to find the path traced by this moving point P or in other words, I am supposed to find the locus of this point P. Because locus of P itself is nothing but the parabola that I am searching for. Alright? Now, you know the drill. Whenever you want to find the locus of a point, you first of all take the coordinates of that point as H, K. Right? Now, the condition which is imposed upon P is that PS is equal to PM. Isn't it? Distance of P from the focus is equal to the perpendicular distance of P from the given directrix. So what we are going to do is we are going to actually exploit this very condition to the maximum level possible. To find out PS, I am going to use my distance formula. Okay, so PS will be under root of H minus 5 whole square plus K minus 3 whole square. This is PS. And to find out PM, I'm going to use the concept of perpendicular distance of a point from a given line. So it will be mod of what? 3 into H minus 4 into K 
plus 1 upon under root of 3 square plus minus 4 square. See, these are all old concepts that I'm using here, assuming that you guys are remembering all of this. All right. Now, let's solve this. This will be under root of 9 plus 16, that is 25. So, this simply gives me 5. For simplification, let us square both sides. When I do that, what do I get? I simply get h minus 5 whole square plus k minus 3 whole square equals 3h minus 4k plus 1 whole square upon 25. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is open this up. Okay, let's use the identity of a minus b whole square. This will be h square plus 25 minus 10h plus again a minus b whole square k square plus 9 minus 6k. What you do is you bring 25 over here. And now on the right hand side, what you are just left with is this. Over here you use a plus b plus c whole square. It will be a square plus b square plus c square plus 2ab. So 4 into 3 is 12 into 2 is 24. So minus 24hk plus 2bc that will be minus 8k plus 2ca which will be plus 3, 6h. Now what I'm going to do is, once I have got this equation, I'm going to bring everything to the left hand side and create right hand side equal to 0. Don't forget I'm trying to simplify this to the maximum level possible. So what I'm going to do, as I said, take everything to the left hand side and create right hand side equal to 0. Let's do that. Let's see what do we get when we do that. Here I have 25h square minus 9h square will give me 16h square. Next, 25k square minus 16k square will give me 9k square. Okay. Further, 25 into minus 10h gives me minus 250h. Minus 6h will give me minus 256h. Okay. Then, 25 into minus 6k will give me minus 150k plus 8k will give me minus 142k. Okay. After that, this term is just going to come to the left hand side and will become plus 24hk. And lastly, let's work upon the constant term. Well, 25 plus 9 is 34. 34 into 25 is 850. And 850 minus 1 will give me 849. So, this is the equation which is consisting of h, k and constants. Mind it, it is free from any unnecessary parameter. So, bingo, we are almost done. What are we going to do in the last step? We are just going to replace h with x and k with y. When we do that, this is the equation in x and y which represents the equation of the parabola that the question was asking us to find. Do you understand? So, did you get it? I just used the very basic property of a parabola that any point sitting on the parabola has its distance from focus exactly same as its perpendicular distance from the directrix and this property was enough to give me the equation of that very parabola. Now from this question I can surely deduce that if I give you any random point in the Cartesian plane as the focus and any random line as the directrix then you can for sure find the equation of that respective parabola by using this PS equal to PM property. Of course that is going to involve a lot of mathematical calculations and in that you are bound to be accurate and in the end the equation that you get might come out to be a long typical second degree equation in x and y which is obviously not so good looking. You know to make life simple for us we try to reduce this randomness, reduce this vagueness by confining things a little. That is we impose restrictions on the location of the focus and the location of the directrix. As a result of imposing these restrictions the parabolas that we get are the prettiest ones and the simplest to deal with. They are called standard parabolas. 
and their equations are called the standard equations. Okay? The very first case is when the focus is lying on the positive x-axis placed at a distance of A units to the right of origin. That means the coordinates of the focus are A comma 0. And the directrix is the line parallel to y-axis lying at a distance of A units towards its left. That means its equation is x equals minus A. Now, with this focus and this directrix, I want to find the equation of the parabola. So what I'm going to do, exact same drill. Let's say P is the moving point which is moving under the condition that its distance from the focus is exactly equal to its perpendicular distance from this directrix. Okay, then what I want to find, I want to find the equation of the curve traced by this point P. Or in other words, I want to find the locus of point P, isn't it? Now, if I want to find the locus of point P, the first thing I'm going to do is take the coordinates of P as H comma K and now use the condition that PS is equal to PM to the maximum level possible. Okay, so now PS, use the distance formula to find out PS. What will it be? It will simply be under root of H minus A whole square plus K minus 0 whole square. Okay, now next is PM. Now, PM, if you carefully observe, is MN plus NP. And if I talk about NP, it is nothing but the X coordinate of point P. And if I talk about MN, you already know that the line that is the directrix is A units away from the Y axis. So, MN is going to have length A units. That means if I talk about complete PM, it is nothing but PN plus NM that is H plus A. Now in the next step, I am going to obviously square both sides. When I do that, what do I get? Let's see. This, when you take to the right hand side, you end up getting K square equals H plus A whole square minus H minus A whole square which kind of resembles X square minus Y square that is X plus Y into X minus Y. So further, plus A minus A cancels out, this gives you 2H. And from here, plus H minus H cancels out, you're left with 2A. So eventually, what you are left with is K square equals 4AH. Now, K square equals 4AH is nothing but the equation involving HK and constants, which is free from any unnecessary parameter or variable. Right? So we are almost through. You know the last step. I'm going to replace H with X and K with Y. What do I get in the next step is Y square equals 4AX. This tiny, pretty, cute looking equation is the equation of my standard parabola, which has its focus at A comma 0, where obviously A is positive and the directrix at x equals minus a. So did you see the magic of restriction? The moment I restricted the positions of the focus and the directrix, my not so pretty looking equation of the parabola has actually been converted to a very nice and very simple to remember looking equation of the parabola y squared equals 4ax. Let's now deal with this question. It says for the parabola given by the equation y square equals 12x, find out all the terms associated with it. That means find its focus, find its axis, find its directrix equation, find its LR equation, find the coordinates of the ends of the LR, find the length of the LR and also find the focal distance of any random point sitting on it. All of this we have to find for the parabola y squared equals 12x. Right in the first glance, I can see that it is resembling the standard parabola y squared equals 4ax. On comparing, I realize that 4a is equal to 12, which gives me what? a is equal to 3. Okay, a is equal to 3. So for this 
parabola a is 3. The graph of this given parabola y squared equals 12x is going to be a rightward opening parabola having its vertex at origin focus at a comma 0 which means 3 comma 0 directrix as x equals minus a that means x equals minus 3 will be its directrix. Okay, this is how simple it is. So quite a few things we have already decoded. Focus we know is 3 comma 0. All right. What about the axis of the parabola? Well, you can clearly see the parabola is symmetric about the x axis. So the equation of axis of symmetry is going to be y equals 0. Equation of directrix we just now decoded was x equals minus 3. Next, what is the equation of the lattice rectum? Okay, equation of lattice rectum. Hmm, This is my lattice rectum. It is perpendicular to the axis of symmetry and it is also passing through the focus. What should be its equation? Well, equation of a line perpendicular to the x-axis passing through 3 comma 0 is what? Every point on that line has x coordinate equal to 3. So the equation of that line is x equals 3. Using the same logic, the equation of AB segment, which is my lattice rectum, is going to be x equals 3. This was easy. What about ends of the lattice rectum? I know the ends are given by a comma 2a and a comma minus 2a. a I know is 3, so this will be 3 comma 6 and this will be 3 comma minus 6. Okay? That's it. Further next, I want length of the lattice rectum. So I told you. Length of the lattice rectum is nothing but the coefficient of the linear variable sitting in your equation, which in this case is 12. So you can directly extract out 12 and declare that to be the length. Apart from that, the concept says 4a is the length of lattice rectum. a you know is 3, 4 into 3 will also give you 12. Okay. Lastly, what about focal distance of any random point? So I'm going to take any random point P comma Q sitting on this parabola, which is distinct from origin, of course, because from the origin, I know the distance till the focus is three units. So that is already known to me. Let me take any point A, which is distinct from the origin. I want to find its focal distance. That means I'm interested in finding the length of the AS segment. Again, I can use the distance formula, but why to get involved in a tedious solving process? Rather, let's use the very basic fact that any point sitting on the parabola is equidistant from the focus and the directrix. So instead of finding the length of the AS segment, I'm going to find the length of the AT segment, which is nothing but AN plus NT. AN you know is going to be P, NT you know is going to be A, which is 3. So P plus 3 is my answer. So this particular parabola had the beauty that it was comparable with my standard parabola and hence by using all these concepts of this standard parabola, I was able to find out the details of all these quantities for my given parabola.